Hi there, Terence McGuana here. Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to look at Single White Female from 1992. When a single white female places an ad in the press for a similar woman to rent a room, all the applicants seem weird. Then she meets Hedra, who seems like the perfect candidate, but she soon discovers something sinister about her. I saw a uh, single white female many years ago on videotape, must have been about 93 when the film came out uh, on VHS and I thought it was a pretty decent thriller so I thought when I was going to do this series I would revisit this one. Uh, you know I went through a whole list of psychological thrillers from that time and uh, I decided to watch this one again because I hadn't seen it in quite a long time and to be perfectly honest with you it was a minor disappointment. I remember this one being quite thrilling, but to be honest, it takes quite a while till it actually gets to the actual suspense in the story. And in comparison to the other film that I reviewed, Fear, it really doesn't hold up. It really doesn't have that those tense moments that that film had. And but the all of the performances in it are fantastic. I really miss Bridget Fonda as an actor. The best thing about single white female is Jennifer Jason Lee. Now Jennifer Jason Lee is just an absolutely incredible actress. Absolutely incredible. Every every performance that I've ever seen her put out has been absolutely perfect. And she is just dynamite in single white female as uh, Hedra, the the creepy roommate, right? And it's kind of funny that when you watch this film and uh, when she's meeting all these uh, potential candidates for the roommate, uh, you're, you're just kind of saying to the screen, yeah, take her, take them. You know, and that's, that's the thing is that she, she feels disturbed by these other candidates because they're too weird. See, if I meet someone that's an absolute character, they've got that, they've got that sort of eccentricity. That's the kind of people that I want to break bread with. I'm always more suspicious of people who are just so normal. That, that's the thing, if, if I was Bridget Fonda's character in this, I would have taken one of those other candidates. The thing is that really annoys me is, yeah, there's this cute little dog in it that gets killed, it gets thrown from a window, or it, it, you don't actually see the dog getting killed, but you see the aftermath of it, and that's just enough, right? And up until this point, you, I've kind of felt sorry for her, and we understand that she's got mental problems, right? This character, Hedra, and I kind of, I, I took her side, but then when the dog died, that was it. You can go to hell, Jennifer Jason Lee. When, when she kills, uh, uh, Bridget Fonda's ex-boyfriend, who is just an absolute wet blanket, this character, right? She stabs him in the eye with a stiletto. I I'm actually jumping out of my seat and applauding at that, right? I don't care about this character, but the wee puppy, or oh, the wee doggy, no, no, that's just too far. And that, that was something I found quite unbelievable in this movie, was uh, there is a scene in it where Jennifer Jason Lee pretends to be Bridget Fonda, where she climbs into bed with her ex, her ex-boyfriend, and and has and does the business with him, right? And he doesn't. He, what he actually realizes, sort of halfway, that that's not Bridget Fonda. Oh wait a minute, you're not Bridget Fonda. But he doesn't put up much of a fight, right? He's like, kind of, oh, oh no, oh, oh no, right? He just he just lets it. He just he just lets it carry on, and it's just unbelievable. So I have no empathy for this character whatsoever. When that stiletto heel ends up in his eyeball, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, you deserve that, mate. Well, okay, he doesn't deserve to die, right? He doesn't deserve to die, but he's an absolutely pathetic character. Really compelled by Jennifer Jason Lee's character. I thought she put in a 10 out of 10 performance, as she always does, but it made me think about how typecast Jennifer Jason Lee had been. And uh, she's always seemed to me as played, a, you know, someone who is damaged. Whether it's something like Fast Times at Regiment High, uh, Flesh and Blood, Last Exit to Brooklyn, all of these films, uh, or even that recent Tarantino one, what was it, the, the Hateful Eight, right? She always seems to play either psychopaths or someone who's damaged in some way. She never got the chance to play uh, the, the girl next door. The girl next door. What does that really mean, right? I've never understood that term, girl next door. I know what, what Hollywood's getting at here, right? Meg Ryan, Sandra Bullock, they were they were the sort of go-to girl next door characters. They, they, you could just, they, these are the sort of people that you could just open your door one day and there they go, they live right next door to you. They're so, they're so down to earth, they're so reachable. It just makes no sense to me. What about Grace Jones, right? If Grace Jones lived next door to me, right, which is never going to happen, right? Isn't she the girl next door? I don't think so, right? Because she's Grace Jones, she's unique, 
she is an individual. That's the thing about, uh, I think that Hollywood tends to do with women, is they put them in boxes. They tend to put them in boxes. Yeah, there's the femme fatale. There's the manic pixie girl, pixie dream girl, the manic pixie dream girl, and there's the girl next door. All these archetypes that they've created, and it always seems to go to the same actresses, right? Meryl Streep being the exception, or Glenn Close, or maybe Helen Mirren, right? Are these actors who get to pick and choose what type of characters they play. But when you have people like Meg Ryan, Sandra Bullock, you know, they're, they're always kind of just pigeonholed into these parts. When they're at that certain age, once they get over the age of 40, oh yeah, they, all, they can play psychopaths now, they can... You know, they can play Jason Voorhees' mother. And Jennifer Jason Lee, I felt that she was put in as this, always this damaged woman. Always this damaged woman. I know that she done, she's done a lot of sort of independent films that don't fall into that category. But when it came to the mainstream Hollywood stuff, she would always play someone a little bit unhinged. Which is a shame because I think Jennifer Jason Lee is one of the best American actors. Seriously, and I mean male or female, I think she's absolutely one of the best. And I really loved her performance in Single White Female. And uh, it was just a shame that the film itself, as a thriller, it takes so long to get going. The, the last half hour is as exciting, but by the time it gets to that point, I'm kind of zoning out. It really doesn't have that pace that something like uh, Pacific Heights or the hand that rocks the cradle, or even fear had, right, where they have a real momentum to them. And in these psychological thrillers, we're never allowed to empathise with these characters who have serious mental problems. They are just, they're just them, and we are us, right? It is an us against them, and they are the other. Given us this opinion that if you, if you met someone who is a schizophrenic, who has had, uh, you know, there's been in, been in an asylum of some sort, or had mental health problems, that you might think twice about talking to them. You might think twice about reaching out to them and connecting with them. But yeah, I do think they had a very close-minded view on mental health. And uh, that's uh, that's harmful. That's very harmful. But yeah, single white female, I wouldn't highly recommend it because I do think it's, out of, out of this uh, stream of films, it's not the best one. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe to the channel, hit the subscription button. I'll be, I'll be back very soon uh, to talk about another uh, psychological thriller or drama and uh, I hope to see you then. Cheerio bye!